So, we're ready to paint our miniatures, but where to start? Nick speaking, and welcome to this video. Right, time for another Back to Basics video for you. And in this one, I want to cover base coating. Now this is probably the most important part about painting your miniature. And I want to have a good chat about it. Um, as always, this video is aimed for beginners, uh, but I do hope it's really useful to you. Okay, let's have a chat about base coating. Right, let's talk about base coating. Uh, now I am gonna do some base coating on this miniature as well, um, but I wanna have a quick chat first. So um, the base coat is incredibly important because effectively it's going to make your end result look good or bad. Uh, now what we really want to do is we want to have very neat uh, base coating um, and we want to have uh, very smooth base coating. So that's the two things we are going to be looking for. Now there are two types of styles of base coating. Um, what I would normally call a neat and a messy style. Uh, now personally I prefer the neat style and that is where you select one area that you want to base coat, you get your colour and you actually go in and you base coat that area, edging in to all of the areas um, that aren't going to be that colour. Now the idea of this for me, for my personal preference, is it helps my brush control um, because I'm already um, being very careful with my work. Now it does take me slightly longer than the other method which we're going to talk about in a second, um, but I, I find it helps me with my brush control um, and also it helps me select the colours because I can see how the model is looking a little bit more than the messy method. So what is the messy method? Well the messy method is saying right when well, I'm going to paint this shoulder pad it's going to be blue and you just get your brush and you think well it's okay I'm going to be painting the trims a different colour, I'll paint that later anyway and you get your uh, base coat and you just base coat everything, you know the trims and everything and then you'd go in afterwards and then you'd uh, say edge in um, say um, an orange uh, trim onto the shoulder pad. Now both of those methods work well uh, arguably the messy method is uh, quicker um, but I personally prefer the, the neat method like I said it gives me more brush control on the whole um, and it's also I find it's, it's I have more satisfaction painting neatly than I do messily. Now obviously the messy method eventually will become neat um, but it's just a, a personal way um, of actually base coating. Okay, so um, how do you go about base coating? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to run over the model with your eye and work out um, which areas of base coating you're going to start with. Now, with a Space Marine, it's not too bad because it's pretty much just one, one armour. But just imagine that you had um, a model which had, for example, um, a jacket on, and then underneath the jacket, let's just say it had his chest showing. Uh, what you would need to do is you need to start with the inner layers first. So you'd actually go in and you'd paint the skin on the inside first before you do the jackets. Generally, on the whole, it's easier doing it that way. Okay, so uh, we have two uh, types of base coating and it depends on what we're actually going to be painting. Now, as you already know, of course, I have uh, primed my model with this white stroke grey primer. Um, and the reason for that is um, I am going to select to paint this model yellow. Because uh, most people would say that yellow and white um, are the two hardest colours to paint. Um, so I thought I would start off with the hardest colour here um, and really just show you how to paint the hardest colour. Because if you can do that, then you can do any colour. So I'm going to start off by painting the yellow and then we're going to base coat some other colours as well and I want to show you the difference between the two styles of base coating depending on the colour that you are painting. Now if I had primed this model black and let's just say for example it was primed black and I just wanted a yellow shoulder pad um, then what you need to do is you need to go in first and lighten up that shoulder pad. So what you would do is go in and maybe do a base coat of grey and then maybe a lighter 
base coat of grey and then if you were painting it white you'd then go in and you'd do some layers of white and if you were painting it yellow you'd go in and do some paints of yellow which we're going to do in a second. Of course I've already painted mine white because I pre-planned very well so um, let's get some paint out and uh, get painting. Alright so I've got my wet palette now as you can see I'm half used uh, some of the paints on here because I've been painting white for my gothic army. So I'm just shaking up the paint here. And the paint that I'm going to be using is this base coat Avaland Sunset for this particular yellow. So just giving it a bit of a shake. I'm going to put just a drop onto my palette like so. I am then going to get some water. Now I've got some nice clean fresh water here and I'm just going to, I've got an old paintbrush and I'm going to just add some water to this so it's just going to be a drop of water and I'm going to mix this up and I'm looking for um, a fairly runny solution because when you're painting yellow the way to do it is to do multiple coats so that's pretty runny it's like milk basically so we're going to go in and we're going to do many layers um, of this colour because it's the only way. Uh, if you go on too thick then it's going to leave paint marks, uh, sorry paint brush marks and it's not going to look very smooth. So we now have our paint on the wet palette. Um, in terms of brushes, let me just get this to focus, there you go. In terms of brushes I am using this one which is a Citadel medium base coat. It's a fairly big brush uh, and the reason why I'm using a very big brush is because I do want to make sure I don't leave, leave any brush strokes. I want to get that paint on nice and smooth. Now if I'm using a smaller brush that becomes more difficult to get that um, paint on without having to rework the paint and that's one thing you want to avoid, you want to avoid reworking it. So once you put the paint on you want to leave it until it's dry. Uh, so let's get some paint on this guy. So I'm going to dip my brush in, not too much and then I am going to start just by running over with a nice thin layer and where it's quite a watery paint it's going on quite thin, it's going on quite nicely don't worry about uh, doing a total coverage at this stage you're just laying down a bit of a, a yellow sort of base almost like a, a rough layer the second, third, fourth however many coats that you need to build up the colour are the key ones because it's going to take a while just to build up the colour. I'm going to go over to the other leg now. Now I've, I've finished that um, first bottom section of the leg. I'm not going to go in any more until it's fully dry. So this is, like I said, almost like a real rough um, coat. Now because we are going in with a very watery paint here. I am using the messy method, um, hence the big paintbrush. Now, obviously, in this instance, I am pretty much painting the whole model with this colour. Um, but if I wasn't, I would still use the messy method because it's just generally easier. So I'm going to just speed up the camera here so that you can uh, still see me do this um, but without me having to continuously talk. Okay, so I'm going to call it done for the first coat. Just going to rinse out my paintbrush. Right, so that's um, obviously drying. Now I'm not going to do anything else until that's fully dry. You'll notice that it's pretty uneven, uh, especially down on the legs where it's already dried. There's some like, streak marks and stuff, but that's fine because it's only the first coat. 
the most important thing is that although there are streak marks where the paint is thin, there are no brush marks, nothing that's actually sticking out. So we're gonna get a nice smooth finish in the end. Uh, now also you'll notice that where I was using that bigger brush, I haven't been able to get into all of the nooks and crannies. But that is fine. Uh, like I said, this is just literally the first coat. What we can do is we can go in with a smaller paintbrush um, and then we can get into all of those nooks and crannies, um, which I'll probably do to be fair on the next coat. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll be back with some more. Okay, that's dried um, and uh, what I've done is I've actually brought in an additional light to try and help me paint here because I'm just not used to painting on camera, uh, but hopefully it's coming out okay for you. I noticed that when I focused slightly on the other clip, but hopefully that's not going to happen this time. Um, okay, so that's all dried. I'm going to now go in with a slightly smaller uh, paint brush. Not that one, that's the one I was using. So I'm going to go in with this one, which is a size two paintbrush. Um, and this time I'm going to be looking to just fill in all the little gaps that uh, we missed last time. So again, I've got that nice thin paint and uh, using a slightly smaller brush, going in, filling in all the little gaps that uh, didn't get hit with the paint on the first coat. I'm also going to spread the paint out. I don't want it to be thick on any of the areas, so make sure once you've filled in the gap that you spread that paint around and then once it's been spread just leave it, don't go back in again. So I'm just going to go over the whole of the model now doing that. Okay so that is complete so I've gone in now with effectively one coat uh, with the small and the big brush. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in with a second coat I'm going to go back to the bigger brush um, and in actual fact I've got some more paint on my palette because I've run out of the other one and this time I've made it actually slightly waterier so I've put a little bit more water in there um, because what I'm going to do now, now that I've got that sort of first coat down is I'm going to go in now and do several very thin coats I'm going to use my base coat uh, brush again, the bigger brush um, so let's continue to do that so again I'm just going to go over all of the areas with this big brush and that yellow paint and I'm going to just go over with one sort of stroke so I'm not going to go over with too many strokes and I'm just going to gradually build up the colour and that is literally how you paint a nice smooth yellow or white the white would work exactly the same way as this I'm trying to get it to focus um, yeah, the white would work exactly the same way as this, so effectively it's multiple very thin layers of paint. So I'm just going to continue this and uh, I shall be back. Okay, so that is the second coat done on the whole of the mini there. And uh, it's really starting to take shape now. Uh, the yellow is getting a little bit more solid, there's still a little bit of streaking, um, but that's fine. Um, so, what we're going to do is go in and do some more layers. Now, one thing you will notice is some of the smaller areas, for example on his arm here, probably just needs one more layer. Um, but if you look at some of the big areas, like this uh, area here and the shoulder pad, that's probably going to need another two or possibly even three little light layers. Um, and basically that's what we're going to do. So I am going to do that off of camera. Um, I'm going to go in and do several more layers on here just to build up the yellow. And in the end we're going to have a nice, solid, smooth layer. Okay, so that is done now. Um, and don't forget uh, to make sure that you rotate the model around in all sorts of angles. Just to make sure that you've got every single piece um, painted. Okay, so yeah, I've done that, and just for reference, I've also been painting the um, other bits of this model as well. Okay, so uh, that's the yellow done. Now you might uh, think, well, that was quite extreme, um, and it was pretty extreme, but we are only doing that extreme sort of uh, base coating because of the colour, because it was yellow. Um, so next, I want to cover 
sort of more normal colors, let's say, colors that uh, will go down a bit um, quicker and easier. Uh, the, the main colors which are more difficult to paint are effectively the light colors, like I said, like yellow and white, um, but it's just a case of doing multiple thin layers. And indeed on my space walls, if you notice, I've got my pink um, and I do a black base coat. It's literally just built up with multiple layers of pink. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the next stage. Uh, we're going to base coat uh, the leather pouches on the back here. So for this, I'm going to use uh, some Morphang Brown, uh, which we have here. So I'm just going to pop some of that into my container. I'm going to shake it first. I'm going to have a little uh, drop here. Okay and a touch of water. Now we're going to put some water in this. We're not going to water it down quite as much as we did the yellow. We are going to uh, make it a little bit watery. Okay, so that is done. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush because we are now painting a smaller area. So I've gone onto this brush and uh, yeah, just dip it in Again, just make sure the paint is just on the tip of the paintbrush and then start base coating, effectively painting it on. Now, the way to do this is, again, thin layers, but just not too thin. You don't have to go so extreme because we are using a uh, darker colour. So you don't want to use thick paint still because you will get those brush marks on there. Um, but you do still want to, you know, you don't have to have it quite as thin as we did the yellow. So I'm just going to base coat this with this brown. You tend to find that if you've got a light primer, you do need more coats of base coat than you do on a black. I think the difference between um, a good paint job and a not quite so good paint job is how thin your paint is and how many layers you do to have a really nice smooth uh, paint job. And this is where I said it's very, very important on the base coating. If you can get down a really nice smooth base coat then it puts you in good stead for the rest of the painting and to really make your miniature look very nice. So I'd say it is probably the most important part. Okay, I'm just going to continue base coating up the first layer and then I'll be back. Okay, so that's the first layer down. Uh, one thing just to note here is if you do make a little mistake and let's say you paint onto the yellow, uh, make sure you clean that up straight away, obviously wait for it to dry. Once it's dried, clean it up. Don't think to yourself, oh that's okay, I'll do that later, because you never get around to cleaning stuff up later. You, you tend to forget it's there, you miss it. Once the other colors go down, you then tend not to see it so much, until you varnish the model, you finished, you take photos of it, and you think, oh yeah, I forgot to go back and clean that up. So clean it up as soon as you can. Don't, don't delay the cleaning up process. Okay, so that is uh, the first coat done, so now I'm going to go in with another coat. So um, once again, I've got that same mixture, I'm literally just going to go in. And this time, because we're painting with a, a darker, more solid colour, uh, it's covering really well this time. Uh, so I can instantly see that I'm only going to need two layers on this paint. And that is probably normal for most of our painting. Um, you know, three probably would be maximum. I think most of the time, two thin layers is what you need to be aiming for. So I'm just going to finish this up and we'll uh, talk some more. Okay, so that is the second coat done on that uh, leather section. And uh, yeah, that's gone on nice and smooth and also um, it's fully covered. So just two coats was fine for that. Um, and uh, that brings me on to the next thing that I want to talk about, and that's talking about your painting uh, process as such. So personally for me, I like to pretty much base coat everything first. 
Um, I like to get all the colours down, that's certainly all the colours that I'm aware of what colours that I'm going to paint. So for example, on this sword here, maybe I'm not quite sure how I'm going to paint the sword, so I might leave that and uh, do that later um, at some stage in the future. Or if I know exactly what I'm going to paint that, for example, I'm going to do blue power effects, when I can go in, I can base coat that blue now. And that's how I like to, to paint. I like to do all of my base coats in one go. Some people would go in and, for example, they might just go in, base coat the leather pouches, they might wash the pouches, they might highlight the pouches, and then when that's done, they might go on and say, do paint the backpack, you know, and do the backpack. So they do it in stages, usually starting from the feet and going upwards. Um, I think that's fine if that's your system. It probably works well if you're painting single miniatures. Um, but personally, especially when I'm painting a unit, I like to do all of the base coats first. I just find that's a lot easier to do. Um, and also, you can see how the model is looking, get a feel for where all the colours are going, etc. So, what I'm going to do now is I am going to continue putting down all of the base coat colours that I'm going to do. Um, and then I shall be back with another little chat at the end. Okay, so there you go. I've laid down all of the base coats on this guy. Um, and as you can probably now tell, he is going to be an imperial fist. So I went in, I did um, a red like chest plate area, did some silver on there as well. Uh, painted up his purity silver, some bone colour. Just turn him around, he's got quite a bit of uh, silver on his uh, backpack just there. I also went in, I did the sword um, with a blue blade, because I am going to do some sort of power weapon effects on there. I did blue on the plasma, painted up the, the guns in silver silver and obviously black, a little bit of gold here and there. Uh, I've also painted up the wolf head which he's going to eventually be standing on and of course the power fist. Um, he's got like um, a parchment thing on there as well so I'm going to put some writing on so that would be pretty cool and uh, yeah I, I'm really really happy with him. Uh, so we are ready for the next stage, base coats done um, and like I said Base coat's incredibly important. You can have a look at this model here. You can see it's looking pretty decent as it is, even just as it stands. Um, and that's the, the key thing, as I said, is to be neat and tidy. If you can lay down that neat and tidy base coat, um, then you're pretty much there. Okay, loads more to come on this series though. Uh, so keep watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.